Now that the competitive year of 2017 for Vanguard came to a close after Worlds, we had the chance to see all the cards that were released in 2017 in action. And now is the best time to rank these cards against each other. And to really kick off this channel in a new year for Vanguard, we're going to do just that. So today, we're going to see the top 10 strongest cards from 2017. A little disclaimer before we begin, we try to be as varied as possible to mix in different grades from different sets, otherwise it will be only the strides and grade trees from the last set, because they were the newest cards we got. Usually newer doesn't always mean better, but with the latest releases that was most certainly the case. Alright, let's do this! What's better than annoying your opponent with multiple poking attacks? And no, I'm not talking about multiple pokes and endless shuffling. Go back to 2016! It's of course multiple attacks while your opponent is stuck at 11k base. That's why for our number 10 we have Blue Wave Marshal Velios. He is our only card from GBT13 Ultimate Stride. We took this card not for his raw power because both generation rare cards from Ultimate Stride are much stronger cards. But the fact that this card's future potential can be insane gives him this spot. While Overlord the Purge gives a lot of pressure with his extra drive checks. It's still a perfect guard target. Alexandros, on the other hand, is a strong card that gives multiple attacks with high numbers, but it's still vulnerable against control, and its counterblast costs can be used against him with new support like Redora. Value Stride skill locks your opponents at 11k, period, even if they cross ride or sitting at a 13k card like the new Gallop. When you stride into Blue Wave Unit, they will be at 11k for the entire turn, and this is big in a multi attack poke clan. On top of this, the other skill lets him call a blue wave unit and gives it 2k and a draw. So a grade 2 9k attacker becomes an 11k attacker. This alone forces a lot of cards from your opponent's hand because they can't depend on triggers for the extra 5k buff. Currently the only blue wave strides are Flood Hazard and Tetra Boy Dragon and they both restand so that's pretty big but not that great on its own. With possible future support Valios could be a high contender for a top tier deck. It doesn't need much to do so. The fact that they removed this line from the card, values will be broken beyond repair, but now it's a solid well designed card with a lot of potential, and that's why it got a spot on our top 10. For number 9 we have Holy Divine Knight Genslot Peace Saver. This card was a godsend for all bluster players. The latest support with the Sendo Aichi Legend deck paved the way for a new bluster deck. Royal Paladin players could finally build a full bluster deck that was meta level strong that didn't have to rely on Sanctuary Guard anymore. But before GBT11 Demonic Advent was released, there was still one major weak spot in the current bluster deck, and that was Blasterblade himself. The fact if you run out of Bluster Blades or Exceed, or he was skilled mid combo, then it was usually lights out for you. Enter Genslot Peace Saver. Not only is this a perfect first try because he has an extra drive and he gives free counter charge, on top of that if you have an open G zone card he gains a crit, but his real strength is that he gives your bluster blade card resist during your turn. Beforehand Kagero and Gear could easily remove the restanding bluster blade with their G guard, but now when there's a flow on the field or you stride into Alfred, they need to accept the fact that you're going to hit them a couple of times, and hard too. And in the case they forcefully remove your Bluster Blade, you can get them back with the new Grade 3 Lul. Most of the cards on the list are strong on their own, but this card fixes an entire archetype and synergizes so well with all the other cards. Bluster decks can now consistently pull off their combos without worrying that they will be counterplayed. That's why Gancelot most definitely deserves this spot on the list. For number 8, we have Were Tiger Jaeger. This card is, in our opinion, the strongest card Darger regulars got in a long time. It gives so much draw and tempo to the player. When you put it into your soul through any means, you can counter blast to draw. And Darger regulars are the masters of counter charge. The free pluses with this card is insane. And the fact that it is a fetchable stride fodder from the soul gives you control over your own pace. Because the draw effect only works in your turn makes this card somewhat balanced. Because you don't want to know the crazy shenanigans you otherwise could pull with this card. Some may argue, what about Blader Mouse? Stack the deck with triggers. Winning image, right? Yeah, that's true. Stacking the deck with full with triggers is very strong. But you put yourself in a sticky situation if you go into that stride. First off, it has darkness. So you need to put something into the soul. Next off, you need to put two cards from your hand into the soul to activate the skill. That's a pretty heavy cost. And after that, all great series go into the deck. There are two problems here. 
one. If you don't gear opponent now, fat chance that your soul is big enough to use any skill. Unless you soul charge a lot of great ones and two, but at least you with no offense option. And that's also not ideal. And two, if you just empty your hand and you drive check no triggers, and yet it happened more often than you think, they run five starters, then you have no guard options and no way to strike next turn. That's why we chose Jaeger for our number 8 spot. With the introduction of Ezra's at the end of last year, we knew Recycle Perfect Guards were a new thing in Vanguard. And while Ezra's is still the king of Recycle Perfect Guards, 2017 introduced us to the queen of Recycle Perfect Guards. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Steam Tamer Arca. This card is ridiculously good. While some perfect guards have a weird condition to fulfill to get them back into the hand, like Stealth Dragon Utsuroi, most other perfect guards have a cost to be paid, like Counterblast or Discard. But Arka is special. Her condition demands two copies of her in a drop zone and a Zodic Time Beast trigger. To get one into the hand, you just need to bind the other two cards. It's a free card, and a perfect guard nonetheless, for no discard or any cost. Yeah, bind two cards, but in certain builds it gives you only more resources or power. There's only one downside to this card, and that's the fact you can only work with Zodiac Time Beast. Because to get it back, you need a Zodiac Time Beast trigger. But to use her, you also need to discard a Zodiac Time Beast from hand. Yeah, you can argue that it's not an infinite like Ezra's, but honestly, I don't think anybody wants a second Ezra's in the game. We waited so long and after a long and rich training with the strongest Shadow Paladin player around, Luart finally achieved his ultimate form, Dragstrider Luart. Of course, that was then and now after GZ took Cosmo's body, there was suddenly a new Luart and a new Luart stride in the form of Drag Piss Stride, but damn it, Dragstrider was first! And man, this card is insane! While the trend of every stride getting a quadruple drive was getting dull, but definitely not ending anytime soon. <sighs> Drag Strider is the king of finishers. This card gets not only an extra drive, but also an extra crit. And you get to stack extra power on this beast by discarding more cards. And on top of it all, it restricts your opponent to guard with great ones and higher from hand. The only thing this card can do is retire. Uh, oh. There's only one issue with this card, and that's why it's not higher up the list, and that's because if you overextend in this card and burn all your resources to finish your opponent and it fails, well, then you need to bet your ass that your opponent can put up a decent retaliation, otherwise, that's the end for you. But in a well-experienced player's hand, this card can be one of the strongest and scariest cards in the game, and that's why it's our number 6. Fights Collection 2017 introduced us to three new additions to the game. Heal Triggers with Skills, Flip G Guardians and Generation Break 8, also known as GB8s. And the latter two are the ones that take our number 5 and 4 spot. So, for number 4, we have our opinion the strongest G Guard from the set and arguably one of the best G Guards in the game with the likes of Denial Griffin and Hate Around. I'm of course talking about Sky Guardian, Supreme Dragon, MP Dragon. As a Vancreaser player myself, this card and the GB8 of the set were warm welcome addition to the deck at the time. They fixed a lot for Vancreaser. Where the now only retires attacking unit, this card can retire and bind any card of your opponent's choosing. And if the difference in rearguard is big enough, they need to retire another card. And believe me, the fact that they can choose isn't that big of a deal. Usually they need to make a tough choice that can hurt them more than just retiring the attacking unit. This card can potentially retire two and bind one in your opponent's turn. For only a G-Guard flip and no counter blast. That is huge. Combine it with the old Vanquisher and you're sitting at a 17k base Vanguard. This card can break a lot of combos and cancel any tempo your opponent was making. Also, this card is capable of stopping the best GB8 in the game. You may wonder why this card is lower on the list than that GB8. Well, you need at least two copies of MP to have a chance to stop this beast. Speaking of which... Oh boy, there were some weird GB8s. There were some really bad GB8s. And of course there were really strong GB8s. And then, woo! Then there is this beast. Temerius Cataclysmic Rogue Hellheart 8. This thing is so infamous that it has many names like Crazy 8, Turbo 8, or as we call them in the Netherlands, Hellharf 8. Named of the Spike Brothers player from the Netherlands, Hart Hayaoi from Crashing the Meta. This card is so strong that the moment this card was announced, people start working on a decklist that solely revolves around this card. 
And thus, the infamous Hellharf Turbo deck was created. And the crazy thing about this card is that you can literally put it in any deck, and I mean any deck, and it's almost a guaranteed finisher. Pop this baby in Link Joker, or even Oracle Fink Fink, or Pill Moon. This card effect is insanely strong that it doesn't matter where it is. And that's why it's the strongest GB8 out there. And that's why it sits on our number 4 spot. But what's even stronger than the first or second stride Hell Heart? Well, to go into a Hell Heart, you need to have a chance to go into your stride turn. <laughs> with the new invasion of Link Joker we got in the fall, they brought with them a new despair to every Link Joker and non-Link Joker player. Before that day, nobody assumed the leaders were going to do anything. It was all Messiah and Chaos Breaker Dragon. But along with them, they brought an unforeseen new parasite in the form of Dark Jet, the leader, Grey Ant. And my god, the impact this card gave to the game was insane. Turn 2 going from 0 to dead was unheard of, but with Greyhand and the help of his deleters buddies, this wasn't a dream anymore. Or nightmare depends on who you ask. This was and currently is still reality. So even if you have Velios, Cancelot, Extra Draw with Jaeger, a lot of PGs with Arca, a strong finisher like Hellheart or Dragstrider, it doesn't matter in the face of Greyhand. For all he knows, the moment he shows up at turn 2 or turn 3, you're dead. Or so crippled that next turn he only needs to whack one of his steals and you're over the edge and yeah, you're dead. At the end of 2016 we got a new archetype in the form of Luard and his specialty was recycling and sustainability. With his free stride skill and Ezra's, Luard could afford a long outdrawn battle. The only downside was that after a while all the triggers in the deck were exhausted. But this changed when the first booster release of 2017 GBT-10 Raging Clash of Bladefang hit the shelves. This set not only gave us amazing Gaia support and the insane stride favorite champ, but it gave us also Belial Owl. This is arguably the best trigger in the game and there are three good reasons why this is the case. First off, it's a free automatic recycle crit trigger. Crit trigger. All it needs to be is being in a drop zone, at the end of the turn, it's back into your deck. On top of that, you can guard with it, unlike any other effect trigger that recycles itself. Those triggers need to be on the field and wait for a certain timing in the game, or you need to activate their skill in order to put them back into the deck. In the first case, that leaves them vulnerable for control, and in the case of the latter, you're minusing if you don't get the draw. But in both cases, you lose 10k shield value because you put them back into the deck. Blau Owl can be used to guard and you can put it back into the deck. Then on top of that, it refunds itself if you use it as a sacrifice for its skill. And on top of everything, this card makes the Luard loop possible and dangerous. Balao Al is one of the most versatile and strongest triggers we ever got. And the fact that it's in Luard makes it only more dangerous, as seen that Luard is quite the stall deck. Now after seeing 9 insanely strong cards, let's see what the strongest card from 2017 is. This card can make any deck cower in fear. It doesn't matter if you have a hand side of 4 or 15 or if you have the Nile Griffin to your disposal. This card will break down your defenses like it's nothing. When we came up with this topic, this was the first card on everybody's mind. And that's why our number one pick for strongest card of 2017 is... Stillwater Festival Deity Ichikishima. Do I even need to talk about this card? You expected this card to be on the list the moment you saw the title of this video. And for obvious reasons. This card single-handedly brought a clan from Extinction back into the limelight, and even to tier 1, until Link Joker put a stop to it, but still even now it's a feared card among a lot of players. The fact that it stops all great zeros and G-Guards from entering the field for the duration of an entire turn, means that counter plays are basically off the table. And fat chance if you don't have 3 perfect guards on hand, you're going to take at least 1 damage this turn. That's if they don't drive check a crit or a stand trigger. I've seen players with a hand of 13 cards go from hero to zero, and they couldn't do a single thing about it. And that's why Ichikishima is our uncontested number one pick for strongest card ever released in 2017. That's it guys, what do you think of our picks of strongest card of 2017? Do you agree with them, or do you think another card deserves a spot on our list? Leave your thoughts and suggestions down in the comments below, and if you like what you see, then subscribe and hit the bell button to keep updated when we release our new videos. Till the next one guys!